everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I'm going to play with one of my favorite techniques for creating a variegated yarn with a twist. Well, there's going to be a little literal twist I'll show you in a second, but the second twist is that today we are going to be using Kool-Aid as the dye source. We're going to be playing with primary colors, and we're going to be using three packets of lemonade, two packets of ice blue raspberry lemonade, and one packet of cherry. We're going to do each of these colors in their own dye bath, one at a time, and they're going to be layered to create a variegated, beautiful colorway. What is the literal twist? We're going to be dyeing a twisted skein of yarn three times. And as we do this, it's going to limit the amount of yarn that has access to the dye in the pot. So in the first round, we'll get some yellow all over, we'll open it up, retwist it, and then over dye with blue. And then when we open that one up, we'll probably still have some white, maybe some green, some blue, and some yellow. We'll twist one more time and then dye in the red. This progression is actually really similar to the progression that I did with acid dyes for one of my Hanukkah limited edition colorways, and I'll have a link to that video up in the iCard and in the video description. Kool-Aid is extra fun to use to dye yarn. One of the reasons why it works is that in addition to the artificial food coloring, it contains citric acid, so we don't have to add any additional vinegar. To dye yarn with Kool-Aid or any food coloring, you need to have the food coloring, the acid. You'll also need heat, which we'll do on the stovetop, and you need a protein-based yarn. It should be wool, alpaca, silk, and can be superwash or non-superwash, but you need that protein base, that animal fiber, so that way the food coloring, which functions as an acid dye, to bind. This won't work on cotton or synthetics like acrylic or polyester, but it does work on nylon because the chemical structure of nylon is very similar to that of a protein. To twist our skein, I'm going to put my hands through like so and then slowly twist one around. I'm not going to twist this as tight as I would to store a skein, but I want it twisted enough um, that it will hold. Um, and after it twists, I'm going to loop one end over the other and then sort of adjust it uh, so that our twist stays on the yarn nicely. Everything we're using today is food safe, so I am going to be using my cooking pots and pans for this project. One thing that will be different today from the other times I've done that is that our dye bath is going to get more acidic over time because I plan to use the same dye bath. This is also a project that is a lot of fun to do with your kids. And I'm gonna start heating things up. In this pot, I have 12 cups of water. And the fun thing about this project, or the thing I guess that's different, is that things are gonna get more acidic as it goes on. We're gonna start by adding three packets of lemonade, which I think is the least pigmented color of any food coloring flavors. Uh, the most pigmented are probably grape, cherry, and black cherry. Uh, blue raspberry lemonade is also fairly pale, but yellows in general tend to be pale because once you make a yellow, especially the yellow number five, um, that is the artificial food coloring number, once you get that super pigmented, it will start looking orange. So that's just something interesting little fact there. But anyway, I am going to stir this up and we are going to bring up the temperature until we start to see some movement on the surface. The yarn is dry and that is okay. It's not going to be dry for the subsequent, subsequent rounds, um, but it is dry this time. Uh, and I mean, you can see that there's not a ton of pigmentation. <laughs> Uh, with the yellow just from dunking it it is pretty pretty pale but you can see that we're getting some nice butter yellow colors in there the red is definitely going to be the most intense uh, if I had had some maybe uh, pink lemonade might have been a better choice but uh, we'll see once all the color absorbs how much color we actually got from the lemonade Today I feel like playing with just Kool-Aid, but if you want your colors to intensify and pop a bit more, then you can 
absolutely supplement the citric acid from the Kool-Aid packets with some liquid food coloring drops. Now, I, th I mean, I think most of it is absorbed, but let's go ahead and wait 10 minutes and then we'll come check on it. After 10 minutes, we do have some color in here, especially when you compare it to the fair color. I'm gonna turn off the heat for now because we are gonna wait. Um, and I am going to take uh, the skein and place it in a separate container. And the other thing I want to do is unwrap it. Uh, I want to unwrap it so that way it can cool a little faster. Uh, we need it to cool so that way we can uh, twist it up again for the next round. Now, I've noticed I've got a little bit of green here. I did use this pan for a project with some green Kool-Aid earlier. And, well, I just quickly rinsed it. I didn't wash it. So I think that there may have been some green Kool-Aid left behind. But it's okay because we're about to add blue over this anyway. So once it's cool, we'll take a look at what uh, this looks like. Even with that little bit of green, it'll still show uh, the unbalance and the type of colorway we got. So I'll be back in, I don't know, it, it'll take a little while to cool. Um, but once it's cool, we'll come back and get ready for round two. I gently squeezed out the excess water from our lemonade. You can see we've got patches of the yellow. There's also big patches of the white. So in this next round, my goal is to try to make sure that those white areas end up on the outside. I'm gonna do that by manipulating the twist a little bit to try to make sure those white patches are on the outside. This time it's a little harder to twist because it's wet and I don't wanna stretch it, but I will carefully twist it, put one end inside the other, and then sort of adjust the hank as needed. So you can see we've got a lot of white exposed. There's also some yellow exposed, so we'll get some overlap, and it'll be really pretty and fun. The twist is fairly delicate, meaning that it can come apart pretty easily. So once we add this to the pot, we're not gonna wanna move things around very much. Of all the food coloring pigments, uh, blue number one is the one that needs the most acid, heat, and time to dissolve. Um, so it's kinda good that it's not first. I'm using two packets of our blue raspberry lemonade and we are going to stir this up to dissolve it and wait for the heat to come up in the dye pot. And this is the same liquid we used before, so things are more acidic than they were last time. You can see there's not a ton of pigment in there, but it should give us a really nice blue on the areas that are exposed. I got a little distracted, but this is hot and we're ready to add our yarn. So I don't want to move it a ton, but I do, um, I think I'll need to increase the water level. Uh, let me grab a little bit of water. I would like this to be able to be submerged. I don't want to move it a ton, but the water level did fall a little far. What I'm adding now is just some cool tap water. There should still be absolutely plenty of acid in here. Um, so I'm not worried about that at all, um, but I'm going to increase the heat back up. <laughs> this is why, you know, this is just a good example of how sometimes you have to go with the flow and modify things by the way things happen. Uh, dyeing yarn is all about fun and seeing where things take you. So if your water level, level gets a little low, add more water. And yeah, now we'll wait, eh, we'll wait 15 minutes so it can heat back up. I'll keep an eye on the heat. If you do hit a rolling boil, don't freak out. That's not gonna cause this yarn to felt. Um, but the ideal temperature is just below a boil. All swell that ends well, right? After 15 minutes, the color has all absorbed. And I'm now not worried about the twist falling out. You can see that we still have some beautiful white patches. I'm not sure how much yellow could be left, but we, I mean, we see yellow through the greens that we see in here, which are lovely looking. Draining off liquid, I turned off the heat because we're gonna need to wait for this to cool. It does help. If you have tongs, it helps to open the skein up. 
um, so that way we can let it cool a little faster. And we do still have some beautiful yellow in here with blues and teals. It's great. We'll try when we twist for the final time to have some of the yellow end up on the inside so that way maybe <laughs> we can retain some of it in the final color. But we're going to set this aside and wait. After round two, the colorway is beautiful. And we do still have some big white patches that we do want to be on the outside for our third round. That's sort of the goal, to have the different colors break things up. So, it's actually easier to do this like on a surface because uh, the twisting is just a bit different than it was before, but I'll use my knee um, to get most of it and then putting one end inside the other. And then we can sort of finagle this to expose those more white areas um, and maybe to twist some of the others more into the interior as needed. Now we've got some white on the exterior, a little bit of yellow, some blue. Um, we do have some yellow parts that are more towards the middle. Fingers crossed that those will stay. But let's go get the dye bath ready for our last round. For this final step, we're going to use just one packet of cherry Kool-Aid, which is probably more pigmented than everything else combined. <laughs> uh, it is a very pigmented color, but I think that Hopefully we'll get a yarn that is really, really pretty. Um, and we are heating things up. So once this is hot, then we're ready to go for the last step. We are hot. I just reduced the heat a little bit. And let's go for it. And add this in, trying not to move it very much. We can see some pretty purples right off the bat. We might also get some orange hints. I am just sort of spooning this over. In general, the red 40 that is in Cherry Kool-Aid is one of the colors to strike the fastest. Uh, the, the, this Cherry Kool-Aid has red 40 and it has a little bit of blue in there as well. But I think you can see how much more intense it is even after sitting in there for a little bit and okay now I want to move to look at it but if I do I will expose more of the yarn in the interior and I think we're gonna have something that is really really fun there's probably not gonna be any orange only a tiny bit of yellow but I hope that it'll be really fun maybe there'll be some orange anyway all right let's wait 15 minutes and then we'll come back the 15 minutes are up we have a tiny amount of pigment left, but you can see just how concentrated that red is. I am so excited to, and I know I'm moving things. Ooh, I see some of that blue hidden peeking through. Ah, I see color. Um, gosh, I think, all right, I'm gonna turn off the heat and just leave this in the pot right now. I really wanna open it right now, which is why I'm like <laughs> itching to take it out but I will leave it here. Now, one other thing that I can talk about right now is what happens if you don't like the colorway? What if we open this and we're like, gee, it feels really unbalanced with that red and now this deep purple and those other colors. What would we do? Well, we can over dye the whole thing. That is always an option. You can always add more color. We could over dye the entire skein in more even just red cherry Kool-Aid as long as you have that on hand. Uh, so that's the nice thing. You are done with your yarn when you decide that you're done. But anyway, we're gonna let this cool. Friends, it is the moment of truth, the moment we have been waiting for when we will unwrap this twisted skein. I'm going to gently remove some liquid. It has cooled completely and our dye bath has cleared. Ooh, I see a little peak of color. Ooh. Oh. That's pretty. It's like not quite a rainbow, but more than just primaries. I'm not usually someone who would be interested in re-skeining yarn, but you can see that this yarn could be asymmetric. There is a long stretch there where we don't have any deep red. Um, and then there's some patches where we have dark, but the reason why I would call this an asymmetric colorway is that dark red doesn't go all the way through. 
but I bet if we went through there would be dark red sections just not as regular and I think it's very pretty and very candy-esque. Balance wise, pink lemonade probably would have been better. Maybe I should have used like a quarter or a third of a packet of Kool-Aid. I could have done that and I'm not entirely sure why I didn't, but nevertheless I think that this is really really beautiful. The yarn is already cool, so now all we have to do is go wash it. You know, the more I look at this, the more I think of a parrot, and the more excited I am by the color. You never know what you're gonna get sometimes. Uh, this technique is especially fun because we've got way more than three colors. I see purple and orange and green and teal, and it just gives them so many opportunities to blend in fun ways, create a really unique stain of yarn. In addition to the food coloring and citric acid, the Kool-Aid has flavors and stuff, so I added a little bit of clear dish soap to this. But you can see that all of the color is in our yarn. Now, if this is too wild for you and you would like something a little more subtle, uh, you could over dye it. Take another packet or even half packet of Kool-Aid and put the whole thing in now that we've rinsed out that acid while it's cool. And we should be able to get that color sort of fairly evenly distributed over the whole thing. But there will still be a lot of tones and shifts in there, but it'll be a little less wild and it'll make it a lot more of a subtle colorway. Now I am going to finish rinsing out the soap, put this yarn in my spin dryer to remove some water and hang it up to dry. Can you believe that this colorway used only three different flavors of Kool-Aid? There are so many different hues in here from the way that the colors layered together. I was a little unsure when the skein was still wet how I felt about the red dominating this color, but now that I'm seeing it dry, I love it. <laughs> I feel like the color navy is a crutch for me, and I tend to like to use that as the final color for many different colorways. So it's fun to play with a different saturated hue for a technique like this, and I love the little pops of color mixed in with that red. There is no reason why you need to stop dyeing the yarn after dyeing a twisted skein three times. You could do four or five. As I have the yarn twisted right here, you can see a lot of the colors exposed, which means that there's a lot of the colors that aren't exposed as well. At some point, you probably would want to stop. But again, there's nothing stopping you from twisting it again and throwing it in another color, or leaving it untwisted and over dyeing the whole thing. It really depends on the kind of colorway that you want to achieve and how the yarn is speaking to you. If there is any advice that I can give when it comes to dyeing yarn, don't be afraid to take chances, make mistakes, and get a little bit messy, to sort of quote one of my favorite icons. You might not know what you're gonna end up with, but if you approach a project thinking, I wonder what will happen if I layer these colors in this order, or I try this technique, or I try this new type of yarn, it's really easy to be pleasantly surprised and excited with the results. I find that the times I end up the most disappointed in a colorway are when I go into a project with a very specific vision in mind. And if I don't meet those expectations of the colors that I had envisioned, then I might feel a little sad. So I advise opening yourself up to the endless possibilities and leaving that element of question and experimentation to your projects so that way you can be thrilled with the results. And again, if you don't like the yarn, you can always over dye it. At some point, there is a limit with how much color you can add. Like once you get to black, you can't really do anything with that, but <laughs> you can push things a bit further usually. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think that this is a great example of how techniques that I use with acid dyes and techniques that I use with food coloring translate really well to one another. Food coloring is technically a type of acid dye. It just wasn't developed with dyeing fibers or fabric in mind. But they do behave and bind to the yarn via the same mechanisms that the commercial acid dyes you buy. So if there's a favorite acid dye technique that I have on the channel, 
go ahead and give it a shot with Kool-Aid or food coloring. I find that food coloring is a really great way to get started on a dying journey. It's how I got started. 10 years ago, I had a lot of bare yarn. It was only 20% wool, it was 80% acrylic, but I ran to the grocery store and got some Kool-Aid and, well, I haven't stopped dyeing yarn ever since. It's funny how all these years later that even though Kool-Aid is where I started, there's still techniques that I haven't tried with Kool-Aid. And so I'm excited to explore more techniques using food safe dyes uh, and hopefully encourage you to give it a shot at home. If you would like to see more Kool-Aid techniques, I do have a playlist where I have a lot of videos. You can do so many things from kettle dyeing to speckling, really almost anything I do with acid dyes you can do with Kool-Aid. And if you find the Kool-Aid colors are a little bit limiting, try supplementing them with some liquid or gel food coloring drops. Are there any other techniques that you would like to see me try with Kool-Aid? Please leave a comment below and let me know. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I release at least two new videos every week on Tuesday and Friday mornings, and you really don't want to miss any of it. And on top of that, we do unboxings and live streams, and it's all a lot of fun. And if you love the yarn that I dye so much and want to support the channel at the same time, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. My shop is filled with hand-dyed yarn that I feature in these videos. And so it's a win-win-win. You can get beautiful yarn, watch exactly how it was dyed, and support the channel all at the same time. You can find a link to my Etsy shop in the video description and in the top right hand corner of the screen. Gosh, I'm, I'm just thrilled with this one. Uh, food coloring is, uh, it's where I got my start and it's so nostalgic but fun to come back and focus on so much food coloring these days. And again, to dye yarn with food coloring, you need four main components. You need artificial food coloring, acid, heat and yarn. And the yarn should be protein based like wool, alpaca, etc. Uh, this technique won't work on acrylic or cotton. The biggest perk of Kool-Aid is that it has the acid and the food coloring in there together. But anything you do with Kool-Aid, except for the techniques where you are taking advantage of the fact that it's a dry powder, you can easily recreate with liquid food coloring. Thank you so much for watching everyone.